As a student, note taking is a skill that comes with the profession, it's a skill that we're always trying to learn, and it's a skill that's always evolving. For the past year and a half, I've been using Notion to supplement all my note taking needs, my YouTube time management, and just overall life admin. And what I found over this period of time is, the reason I really like Notion is because it allows me to customize the app based on my studying needs, especially with its unique toggle function that allows me to incorporate active recall into my studying, which is obviously the most effective way of learning. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeremiah and I'm a third year biomedical science student at Singapore Polytechnic. And before I jump into how I take notes with Notion, I want to break down this entire workflow into three distinct stages that are all starting with E. So the first one is exposure, the next one is encounter, and the third one is eternized. So going into each distinct stage at the top, we have exposure, which is basically the first time we come into contact with the material. And I'm not going to talk much about exposure because I made an entire video on how we can better prepare for class that talks about three stages and how with each rising stage, we are better prepared for class and can maximize our learning. So I'll leave that link here. And for the second stage of encounter, it's nothing too fancy. It's about the interactions with the material material that you have in class, so with your classmates, with your teachers, and that's all about asking the right questions, being able to engage with the content if you've done the preparation, and that's just to fill in any misconceptions, any doubts that you have on the topic, but it's not really at that memorizing and understanding stage quite yet. So for the last stage of Eternize is when we go into our den. We hunker in, we turn off all the lights, and we just focus on what we're doing, and hopefully that commits to our memory, hence Eternize. But realistically, if we don't use that information for a while, our brain does delete it. Hence, we do need to incorporate ways that we can constantly test our brain to retrieve the information, which will be the main driving force in this workflow, active recall. But anyway, in today's taking video, it will be evolving around Eternize so we can see how I use Notion to maximize my Eternize stage and hopefully understand everything for a pretty long time. So the first step of this Notion page setup is to map out the topic. Now ideally you would have done this before you do all this revising in the preparation stage but for the purposes of this video, I'll go over how we map out the topic and this step is absolutely crucial. It might be one of the most important stages of this entire process so do please start with this crucial step. If you didn't get the chance to watch my recent vlog, I was mapping out the entire topic in the morning as I was preparing for class so that I understood what was going to be covered. I find this absolutely crucial when starting to study a new topic because it lays the foundation and a path for you to see. And all you need to do after that point is you just fill up the holes in between. And as we all know, it would be easier to do this if there's a foundation laid there rather than walking blind. And right now we have our Notion page set up here. And to the right, we have the main topics that I've mapped out for this chapter. And to the left, we have just this random lecture slide that I downloaded off the internet. I'll leave the link in the description. And to start off, maybe you want to fancy this up. So you can add some decorations to make this look fancy. So you just add an icon. So let's say we type in a heart shape, if we can find any for the cardiovascular system, or maybe a broken heart. I don't know because some of the diseases in here I suppose you can add a cover so you can change the cover to something that looks a little more interesting so let's say something to do with medicine or maybe the heart okay anything works so let's go with this right so after we have this pretty decent looking notion page set up we can now go into the main point which is the more important bit now I've mentioned at the start that I do have all the headings here. Ideally, we would be basing these headings off of learning objectives, but as you can see in these slides here, there aren't any learning objectives, so that's fine. I'll just quickly scroll through the slides right now so that you're able to see that these are the main topics that are covered, hence the headings that I've put out. So hopefully you agree with the headings that I've put out. Right, so after going through those slides, there are three general principles that I try to stick to when creating these main points and mapping out the topic. So firstly at the start is all these main headings that you can see here. So one, two, and three. These are the main points that the lecture is going to talk about. So if you were to summarize the lecture in just five points, these are the five points. And the benefit of doing this is it acts as signposts. So each time you come back to the lecture and you just want to get a very brief brush overstroke of what's going on, Okay, there are these three points, talking about the cardiovascular system, they are the main components of it, the diseases that are associated with it, and the specific disease, the blood pressure, hypertension. Then, the subheadings are the more important bits where we start to group together the slides that have the same theme that would otherwise go well together. Now this step doesn't have to be perfect, it's just us crossing over the slides, trying to group them together. This is even before we dive into the slide, so sometimes you may get it wrong. 
but again it's just to map out roughly what's going on so that we have a better idea before we start and the last thing that we can do is to associate numbers with the pages so for each grouping we can give the slides where it talks about this topic now this acts as a quick access in the future so that we can quickly go to the reference slide but additionally it also acts as a way for us to rearrange the slides if we needed to so say for the heart we had slides two three and seven so maybe after going through every single slide we want to make slide seven slide four so that the heart flow is two three four it's a better flow better for understanding so after you've gone through the process of mapping out the subject and now you understand the main headings and the rationale behind the headings, the subheadings and possible numbers, now it's actually time to take notes. And before I go in, I do want to mention that the way I take notes is not to summarize content that's already written out. I don't rewrite it in my own words because I do find it a little bit of a waste of time. As Ali Abdel commonly mentions, summarizing content, rewriting it, highlighting it is a complete waste of time because it's low yielding in terms of a study hierarchy in terms of the most effective methods. And the most effective method that has been proven is to test yourself. And this is called active recall. And the way that I'm gonna use and incorporate this into this system is to write questions for myself and put answers below it so that each time when I come back and revise the content, I'm looking at the question, I'm testing myself with questions that I wrote for myself and the answers are there to check if I got it right. So now I'll go through the process of how I craft these questions. So at the start, the first chapter is the main components. And we can see the first slide, which is commonly the first slide, is just the general functions of it. So we can see here the cardiovascular system is a system which transports respiratory gases, nutrients, vitamins, blah, blah, blah. So after reading the general information slide, which is this point right here, I can interpret that as the responsibility of the heart. So I can either write the question, what is the responsibility of the heart? Or I can just put responsibility and a question mark. And then I'll use this toggle feature, which is part of Notion. I'll open it. I'll take a screenshot of the answer with the slide and I'll just chuck it in there under responsibility. So each time I come back, I'll ask myself, what is the responsibility of the heart? So I'll remember that the cardiovascular system, actually, what's the responsibility of the cardiovascular system is to transport the respiratory gases, nutrients, vitamins, and so on. And then for the next point, you can see that it talks about what the cardiovascular system consists of. So I would see that it mentioned heart, blood, and blood vessels. So I'll quickly scroll through the next few slides and notice that it's indeed talking about the heart, it's talking about the blood vessels so you do know that that is kind of a signposting for the rest of the slides so i grouped them into heart blood and blood vessels which is pretty convenient so now we focus on the heart so if i open up the heart i've written some questions so the first question that i wrote is what is the function of the heart now we can see here that it's telling us what is the heart which is not the question what is the function of the heart but this simple step of rewriting the question forces our brain to rethink the content in a different way rather than just summarizing what's going on, chucking into the system and hoping we understand. I've understood that, yes, it is telling me what the heart is, but it's also telling me what the function of the heart is. So if I wrote the question, what is the function of the heart, it demonstrates that I understand the topic to a deeper degree and I understand the content which we'll hopefully remember in the future. Now I'll screenshot this again because it is important to have context with the slide so I just like to screenshot it and it does save time. So I'll put it in under function and each time I come back I remember that the function of the heart is to pump in pure blood into lungs and pump pure blood into the rest of the body. And for the next few slides you can tell it talks about the location of the heart of which I can just put it in the location another screenshot. And then next it talks about the valves and it tells me about the four valves the aortic, the tricuspid valve, the mitral valve and the pulmonary valve. Now. This is good information, but if you notice, it doesn't show me where the valves are. And I've written the question, what is the location of the valves? So I'll just do a quick Google search of what are the four valves of the heart. Then I'll just take the image. So any image here of which I can just screenshot it and just drag it into Notion. And boom, we have the location of the valves, which will prove to be better for me to understand the topic. And each time I come back to this question, I can take out a piece of paper or I can use an iPad, which I've gone paperless with, and I'll just sketch out the location of the valve, trying to remember it to hopefully serve my memory better. Next, we'll be talking about the blood vessels. So you can see the question that I've asked here is, what is the deal with blood flow? But looking at the slides, all the slides shows are the five types of blood vessels. So the thought process here is instead of just asking the question, oh, list down the five types of blood vessels, asking the question of what is the deal with blood flow is actually beneficial. And I do really like to ask the what is the deal questions. And with these questions, it's just asking you to describe in your own words how the blood flows around the heart. And by asking this question, 
It incorporates the aspects of the different vessels, so the blood flowing from arteries, arterioles, capillaries, venules, veins, all around the body. And this not only prompts me to understand the five types because that would be the required memory when understand this question, it also makes me think about how blood flows through them, the locations of blood, the oxygen requirements for blood at each location, and the what is the deal question is such a good question because it allows me to think of the big picture, it allows me to sequentially think about the different steps, and of course, if I do struggle with this question, I just highlight it, plus sign, add some color, and then I just put a yellow background so when I come back to this slide, I'll know that, okay, this is the point that I have to focus on because it's an important question for my understanding and it's a question that would probably come up in the exam. So we move on to the diseases, there's arteriosclerosis, there's ischemic heart disease, angina pectoris and myocardial infarction. So firstly, you can see that oh, arteriosclerosis, heart disease, angina pectoris, myocardial, they all correspond. But for blood pressure and specifically hypertension, I didn't put it under there because hypertension does have a few slides after that, which means that it's a pretty big topic. So I decided, you know what, I'll just give it another heading just for itself. And to prove that the previously mentioned method of having numbers is beneficial. So you can see that at the start, we do have atherosclerosis. But if we were to scroll down beyond hypertension, you find atherosclerosis again. So if you were to have numbered the slides previously, you would know that, hey, maybe I can rearrange the slides so that all the arteriosclerosis slides can be together. So it helps with my understanding. And do remember that the material is there to help you. So do feel free to use it to whatever means it is. Rearrange it, write all over it, make notes about it. It's there to help you. Anyway, going specifically into the arteriosclerosis slides, you can see that the first question I asked here is what are the major risk factors which you can see over here? And you will notice that I've put a number next to it because this is a list question that we can't avoid. So you can see that below I've put the answer. We can see that I've given myself the Q of four, which represents there are four points in this. And now this may seem like a giveaway, like, oh, you're telling yourself there are four points, so you're giving yourself the answer. It's not active recall, you're not learning it. But I would rather suggest that giving yourself the prompt of four, and each time you come to the question, you see four, it actually trains your brain in a different way that Yes, you still need to remember the four methods, the four risk factors for atherosclerosis, but it's subconsciously training your brain to remember that risk factors four, risk factors four. So you always associate the risk factors with the number four. So that in the exam, you remember that they are four. It's a way to check with yourself that you have all four numbers written down. So this is just what I like to do, putting it down in a way, categorizing them. And another important bit is, if we want to scroll down, there's the artery cleansing foods. You can see that for my cleansing foods question, I've put the number three. But when we go to the number there, you can see that it's one, two, three, four, 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 which is 16. But I've put three. And the reason I've done that is because it is unlikely they would test all 16 artery cleansing foods. So I've put the number three to choose three of my favorite ones, which I think I can remember. So avocado, salmon, and watermelon. And I'll just put it there as the ones that I remember. And I'll just put the rest under just as a reference. So each time I come back to it, I may subconsciously remember one or two more like cinnamon or turmeric. And you just continue this method on for all the other notes that you have to write with the main concepts of asking questions like what is the deal, the risk questions, rewriting the questions in your mind to rethink the questions, which prove to be another dimension another perspective to understand the content, which will just overall help your understanding. And just remember the absolute, absolute key here is to incorporate testing elements so that you can simulate the exam and learning is the act of retrieving information out. So by having these questions, you're practicing retrieving, which will be beneficial for you to score the grades that you want. And of course, each time you come back to it, you just need the discipline to go through the questions one by one. Well, if you're really in a time crunch, just go over the questions that you've highlighted in yellow. All right, and that is how I write questions for myself as a note-taking method. Now the next natural step is to come back and revise it, which you can check out in this video on the retrospective revision timetable, how you can space out all your revising to maximize efficiency for studying. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a nice day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.